Thought I'd make a quick little video on Photo Etch. I gotta find a better damn iPad mount. This thing shakes so much. Um, this is one of the best tools to have for Photo Etch. I mean, this thing, you know, when you go to bend the Photo Etch, this thing is, you know, you can't do without it. Um, you can take this off. Take these screws, take this wing nut, take this, and you can turn this around to have the long straight edge. Or you can leave it as is and use the little fingers. And the way that you do it, I'm not going to bend this, but you'll get the idea. You go ahead and put this in here. And then go ahead and tighten this wing nut and then tighten these little nuts. Now there's a groove right in front of the fingers. And that's where your razor blade, it comes with single edge razor blades. And all you're using these for is to bend. You're not using them to cut. But you're going to put that razor blade under your part. And you're going to go all the way to that groove and real gently go up. That's going to give you a really nice bend. You know, uh... On photo etch, you got to be really careful that you get it right the first time. Because if you try to go back and do it again, it's more than likely going to break on you. <clears throat> when you're using photo etch, this is the uh, the grill from my little cruise liner. When you're using photo etch, you saw see how every part has a very tiny little connecting point right here right here right here you're going to take an exacto 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 and put it right there on that little tiny connection point as close to the part as you can make sure it's on something very hard cuz if you put it on something that gives when you push down with your knife it's going to bend the part you want that so on a piece of aluminum or glass or you know this uh, cutting mat is strong enough but go ahead and just put it on there and just press down and it's small enough where your exacto knife will cut through it and then once you get it cut off you're gonna get a file now you can use a sanding stick but these little burrs will tear up your sanding stick so I use a, an actual metal file one of my little mini files and you can tell when the burr is gone because then the file slides easily. When the burr is there, you can feel it grabbing the file. Just kind of run your hand over it and make sure it's nice and smooth. Now I'm not using this exact piece here. It's just a template because I'm going to be using the kit grill, but I'm taking a very thin layer off so that it's basically flush with the front of the cab, as in a continuance of the cab. And this allows me to, you know, easily glue my hinges on and not have to worry about it, you know. Um, now, as mentioned in my other videos, whenever you're working with Photo Etch, you see how shiny that is? Glue does not like adhering to that shiny surface. So go ahead and rough that up real good. And you can use super glue or epoxy. And on very tiny items, very tiny photo etch items, ones that will go over paint, you can use clear paint or uh, white glue or or epoxy I wouldn't recommend super glue but epoxy white glue clear paint you know clear coat or uh, future floor polish you can use a very tiny drop of that and then stick your emblem to it just you know be careful not to touch it till it dries um, let me go ahead and we'll take this off because I am going to bend this let me get my put my eyes on. this out here I keep a, 
a little bit dull knife for working with photo etch because it will dull your blade give a little cut a little cut cut guess what cut and another cut and the last one see I'm tucking my blade up close to the uh, the part itself see and it just falls right out We'll take Mr. File. You can even hear when the burrs are gone. Now what this is, is a tread plate that goes on top of the frame. And the sides of it bend downwards. So I'm going to take this, take it apart here, and these aren't too expensive. Um, there's two companies that make it, and a guy contacted me and said that Micromark stole his design, which, you know, who, who knows, it's possible. But you see how the fingers come off, and then you just turn it around, it's got a little spring here to lift it when you're pulling your part out. We'll just turn that around, put the washer back, put the little knob on, and then the little nuts. And I go all the way down, because you only need these fingers lifted a small amount. So then just give them a little crack, a little crack, a little crack. Don't give them crack. Don't make them do that. Um, so we're looking at this. And... Well, this is going to be fun. On this, you got to go by the corners because there's no definitive line where the, uh, where the bend needs to be. So you just got to figure, you know, you're going to go right there in the corner. I guess I should hold this where you can see it, huh? Right there where the flat part of this side starts and the flat part of this side. You're going to, you're going to tuck it up right to that. Okay. You're going to leave a tiny bit. Of space between the edge of this and the edge of the fingers you know don't put it right on that edge that little line at the corners of the sides leave it a little bit out take your razor blade tuck it under Get that razor blade down in that groove. Give it a little bend. And as you can see, gives a perfect little bend. I hope that's coming through. It's kind of, well, probably because I'm wearing my little goggles. We're going to do that on all four sides. These are the kind of things that will put you in the nut house. Slide that photo etch, I mean slide that razor blade back in here. Give it a little bend. Kind of got to go a little bit further than you need to. There we got a perfectly bent edge. Now the fun part. You have to be careful because now that we've bent these, they're going to be in the way when we go to fold these sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the fingers. I guess I should have bent the long sides first. Duh.
Now I'm not going to sit here and do the whole thing because it's going to take a while because you got to go in steps. But let's get this all back on here. Now, being that we've bent these two sides up, actually down because they'll go like that, we need to be able to bend this part and have this side clear when it bends up. So we're going to tuck it underneath the fattest finger. Mm, that ain't going to work. Probably going to have to go as close as I can to the edge. I think it'll work. Let's see if I can get to it. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to start at the very corner. Get it going. So that the corners will be nice and sharp. And don't be laughing at me if you do this better than I do. Because I'm not an expert by any means. Oh, don't move. Got to make sure this thing's really tight. And then just give a little... Now, I'm not going all the way. Because I don't want it to make a crease in the metal. Let's see, let's see if we can go here. And for future reference, start with the long sides. I got in a hurry and didn't do what I should have. Again, we'll slide that razor blade under there. It's kind of hard to get it. You can lift it with your fingers just a little bit. Get in there. Just give it a little bit of a ramp. That's going to get your corner started. Then we'll go back to the center with the biggest finger. And give it a bend. And just gently work your way back and forth. And it'll give you a nice clean break in that metal. When I say break, that's the term used when you fold metal. Not break as in. <laughs> I just wanted to cover that. Uh, a lot, lot of awesome photo edge coming out, guys. Uh, Check Truck Model. They have all kinds of cool stuff. That's where this set came from. It's specifically for the Mack Cruise Liner. But they have it for the Kenworth, Peterbilt's, Freightliners, International Kits, the Mobius Kits. So you can get a nice photo etch set, you know, for your chassis, for your interior, emblems, door handles, all kinds of cool stuff. I got everything I could get for this cruise liner. Um, you know, just for the hell of it. Just to have some fun with it. It even comes with a, a little screen for the uh, after cooler. Or inner cooler. I'm not sure exactly which that is. For the engine, I went ahead and I put some styrene square rod on the sides. Just to make it look recessed a little bit. But that's it. Just wanted to cover that. See ya.